Welcome to episode 25 of Blue Green Fusion, Blue Collar Jobs for a Green Economy. I'm your host, Lee McQueen, and I'm very delighted that this is the 25th episode. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> and while certainly we want to work closely with the legislature to uh, see what we can do to hold property taxes down, uh, an awful lot of the, the fees that we get through property tax, whether they be residential or commercial, go to pay for the work that these folks do, plus police, plus fire, plus everything else that we do in the city. And the title of this episode is Green is Real. And I've got two announcements. They're both about Solaris on my book. I made some author appearances, which I'm very delighted with. I spent National Library Week at Southeast Polk High School. Um, they invited me out to meet some of their up-and-coming bestsellers um, and it was just a great experience and I was able to talk to them and experience that optimism and that youth, youthful vitality um, that uh, is very important in the writing field. And then also um, Solara Sun made an appearance at, with a writer in the library at the Trestle Trail opening at the Woodward Public Library. And so um, I made some sales there, met a lot of people, um, interacted with my fellow Iowa authors, and it was just really wonderful uh, time well spent. And then I'll be talking more about that Trestle Trail opening later in the show. It's heavily covered by the media, so it's probably information that you already know, but I'll probably add in a couple of insights. I would hope that a lot of our elected officials up on the hill would come down and spend time in the trucks with these guys when they're out doing their services or in a police car or in an, a uh, rescue vehicle to find out what they actually do and try to figure out whether or not those services are actually needed by the citizens of the city of Des Moines and not only there but all across the other 947 cities and towns in this state. So, um, that's basically it for announcements. Usually at this time I launch into community news, but this time with this show I decided to intermingle community news and the headlines because they seem so very much related. Okay, and so starting off with energy, uh, there's uh, Creative Visions. They're hosting energy efficiency workshops and they uh, alerted the community about that uh, through their electronic newsletter. They have a website with more information on that. It's www.creativevisions, uh, plural, then ia, then dot org, slash green. And so this is from their electronic newsletter. Creative Visions, along with our partners at the Iowa Energy Fund and Mid-American Energy and the Energy Group, will be hosting a series of energy efficiency workshops throughout Greater Des Moines. And so you have that website. You can follow up for more information on that. They held their first meeting on April 26th, but since it's a series, there's likely more workshops forthcoming. So it sounds like something very exciting. Uh, something similar was announced in the Iowa Bystander, uh, the April 29th edition of the Iowa Bystander. So they have free, uh, free pre-apprenticeship green training classes. And so there's something in the article that I want to share. Spectrum Resources is looking forward to the next round of entry-level solar PV classes, photovoltaic, and is currently taking applications. Classes are costly when taken in other venues. However, thanks to generous funding from the Northwest Area Foundation and Milton S. Eisenhower Foundation, classes are offered at no expense to students. To be eligible, participants must be age 18 or above, have obtained a high school diploma or a GED, fill out an application and submit a resume, go through an interview and evaluation process, take an assessment survey, and then to receive the application, you can go to their main offices, which are located at 1700 Kiyosakwa Way, that's Des Moines, Iowa, which is slightly north of the downtown area. So lots of good things, good green things, happening in the Des Moines area community. It's just great. 
we would like you all, as citizens of the city of Des Moines, to reach out to your elected officials and say, you know what, our city was rated the number one place to do business, the number one place to raise a family, and the number one place in the country to have a career. And I'm trying to figure out what are we going to try to fix with a bill like they're proposing that uh, could have devastating effect on cities and towns across this country. So, not the country, but this state. So let's uh, reach out to them and thank you guys for everything that you do and all of our other city workers. So, appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. Something else was in the Des Moines Register, and this is a story about ISU students who ask for clean energy. This is the April 28th edition of the Des Moines Register, and there are a lot of energy and green sustainability related issues um, in that Des Moines, same issue, articles in that same edition of the Des Moines Register. But let's start with this. Um, Ames, Iowa. One after another, students told the State Board of Regents that the next president at Iowa State University must develop clean and sustainable energy on campus. The board hosted a public forum Wednesday at ISU to gather input on what the board should seek in the next, uni next university's leader. The most important environmental change your university can make is to close the coal power plant on campus, which is a significant source of air and ground pollution. That's according to Graham Jordison, he's a, a 2009 ISU graduate. And so I can just imagine those students, I didn't attend a forum, but I can just imagine them turning the current president, uh, President Gregory Jeffrey, tear down this coal oil, oil plant, or something like that. That's, that's how I imagine it going. Earlier today that there was going to be a uh, debate in the House tomorrow on the floor to take up House File 691. House File 691. It is a bill that uh, has rather significant impacts on property tax collections for cities in Iowa, uh, including the city of Des Moines. What we wanted to do today was just to appoint the council uh, with the impact that this legislation would have on us and hopefully to the community as well. This is an article um, in the April 28th edition in the business section. Foundry will create 175 jobs in Iowa City. And then that was also covered in the Iowa City Press Citizen 2. Um, but basically, uh, Terry Branstad attended the Iowa Wind Energy Association conference when it met here in Des Moines last April. He made a pretty significant announcement at that venue, which was really great news that um, I've been wanting to share for a while. He already shared it on his website in a press release, but I'll add in my own uh, insight into it. Um, according to this article, a Maryland company plans to build an iron casings foundry that will employ 175 people in Iowa City, by 2013, um, at the Iowa Wind Energy Association annual conference in Des Moines, Governor Terry Branstad announced that Naticom, the North American Ductile Iron Company, plans to locate its first North American foundry in Iowa City. Debbie Durham, director of the Iowa Department of Economic Development, said Naticom was impressed by the statewide support of wind energy. Um, Iowa is the nation's second largest producer of wind energy, second only to Texas. The article continues, Durham said 80 companies now support Iowa's wind energy industry, employing 2,300 people. Plans call for the foundry to be built at the city's wind energy supply chain campus, which is near Scott Six Business Park. The Iowa City Development Group and city officials have been hoping to lure parts manufacturers for wind energy industry to the park, which would be near two major wind industry companies, Axiona Energy North American Corporation in West Branch and then Clipper Wind in Cedar Rapids. It's said that the foundry would employ non-union machinists, engineers, and administrative staff, among others. Ultimately, the foundry could provide products to other industries, including rail and agriculture. 